Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to learn about the so-called virtual collisions in Monte Carlo simulations. In this lesson, I'm only going to define the virtual collision. I'm not going to explain what is it good for. Uh, I will talk about that in the next lesson when I speak about the delta tracking procedure. So uh, let's define the virtual collision now. A virtual collision is basically not a real collision. Uh, it is a collision during which uh, the direction of the neutron remains the same and also the energy of the neutron remains the same. So the direction vector omega prime after the virtual collision equals the omega vector before the collision and the energy of the neutron after the collision is also the same as the energy of the neutron before the virtual collision. Then the virtual collisions are associated with the so-called virtual macroscopic uh, collision cross-section, sigma v. So uh, 1 over sigma v gives the mean distance between the virtual collisions. Now we can assign a certain uh, value of the virtual uh, macroscopic collision cross-section for a specific material and uh, let's have a look at what will be the impact on the neutron transport simulation. So let's just assume that uh, we have a material which has a certain uh, value of the uh, macroscopic cross-section for scattering then there is a cross-section for the absorption so that is the capture and the fission cross-section together and then we can assign a very large macroscopic cross-section for the virtual collisions so let's assume that this virtual cross-section is twice as big as the macroscopic cross-section for the absorption and scattering of neutrons. So let's assume that the virtual cross-section here creates 50% uh, of the total macroscopic cross-section. Uh, let's assume that the absorption uh, cross-section creates 25% uh, of the total macroscopic cross-section and the scattering cross-section creates also 25%. So every second collision on average should be virtual collision and uh, the remaining uh, uh, collisions should be either absorption reactions or the scattering collisions with uh, each having 25% chance. So let's have a look at uh, an example of some uh, uh, neutron history. So let's assume that uh, a fission neutron is born at a certain position in the system. It has a energy and a direction given to it. And we start to sample the distance to the next collision. Now, this is our total macroscopic cross section. Let me write it here. This is the sigma t. So it is twice as big as it would be without the virtual cross-section here. So that means that the distance between the collisions is going to be smaller. It's going to be twice as small as it would be without the virtual uh, collisions here. So when we sample the distance to the next collision is going to be small. So let's assume that the uh, first collision that we simulate is virtual collision. Uh, but according to its definition, it doesn't change the energy or the direction of the neutron. So it remains the same. So it looks as if nothing has been changed to the uh, properties of the neutron. Alright, so let's uh, simulate a new collision now. Uh, let's say that uh, it, it 
will happen to be the scattering co collision so uh, it may occur at this place and the neutron will change its energy and its uh, direction and uh, the next collision that we simulate uh, may be the virtual collision again so the energy and the direction of the neutron will remain the same it will not change and the next collision may be finally the absorption reaction so this is this will be the ending point for the neutron history so you can see with the introduction of the virtual macroscopic collision cross-section we have increased the number of collisions the total number of collisions uh, however the number of real collisions remain the same those are given by the real cross-sections for the absorption and the scattering so what has increased is the number of virtual collisions however these do not change the energy or the direction of the neutrons so the introduction of the virtual macroscopic cross-section really has no effect on the neutron transport simulation the distance between the real collisions is not affected it remains the same and it's only given by the real macroscopic cross-sections so as you can see the uh, concept of the virtual uh, collisions uh, gives us a tool to actually manipulate with the total macroscopic cross-section we can now increase the total macroscopic cross-section as we like without actually changing the results without affecting the neutron transport uh, simulation so uh, we are going to see in the next lesson that this is going to be very useful for us so this is just a summary slide i would like you to remember that we are free to increase the total macroscopic cross-section in any cell by any arbitrary virtual cross-section and it will not affect the results of the neutron transport simulation in any way and that is all for now have a nice day